Hi, welcome to Raven's Wing Tarot. My name's Amanda, and today we are exploring what surprise message does spirit have for you? In pile number one, you chose the smoky citrine. So I'm gonna move it two and three over here. Put this here, and then we're gonna pull your spread to see what does spirit, what surprise message does spirit have for you? Whoa, there's a lot of cards that we're trying to come out all at the same time. <clears throat> Let's find out here. These two, and then I'm gonna want an, an oracle. Okay, I'm not taking all of those. That's a lot of cards that just flew out. So out of those that flew out, you want me to have those two, okay. Make sure I don't have these upside down, of course. I did. <gasps> Excuse me. What is going on here? There's that, and then Oracle. Come on. Okay. So, let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> My throat just got itchy all of a sudden. Maybe there's something going on with your throat chakra. Okay. Let's see your overall energy. Ooh, the six of wands. Do you see that? It's enlightenment. <clears throat> and it's a cycle of expansion is what I get. A cycle of transformation because this big six is speak of cycles and there's this big circle here, which is a cycle, right? And then it's the soul star and then she's got her chakra way up here. That's the solar Rishi. <clears throat> it's about three feet above your head. Yeah, there's something, this, the surprise message Spirit has for you is that you have a cycle, you're about to begin a new cycle where you're going to come into your consciousness. You're going through a transformation of consciousness. And if you feel like you already have, well, you're about to go further. Okay. Ooh. What is this message? Interesting. So, I mean, it's transformation because, I mean, it is wands, it's fire energy. But this has to do with manifesting. <clears throat> the six of, uh, or sorry, the page of pentacles. Do you see how, you know, she wants to manifest this rose. So in order to manifest a rose, she has to become a rose, right? She's wearing a rose dress. Her head is a, dr is a rose. As within, so without. This is something, this is reflecting. Ooh, the, this is what it is perspective shifting it's also transformation you also you have the king of wands here <clears throat> and this king of wands has a moon here right it's a mirrored path it's taking this path into the unknown into your unconscious because even here i'm getting more unconscious mine the moon represents the unconscious not subconscious not that it's like it's been there in the periphery but you just hadn't quite looked at it this is like you don't even know it's there um, because you have the page of voices here in this page she's wearing glasses so she can see clearly she's putting the glasses on so she can see and she has all these shadows that have been dancing in her head but when she shifts her perspective right the higher perspective higher awareness <clears throat> ascension those shadows are going to be different those shadows are going to be her friend <clears throat> And then here with the six of voices, again, you've got the moon here in this, the higher self, right? This is your higher self. This is you, your lower self. And the unconscious part, the, this is the unconscious part of your higher self. This is a piece of your multidimensionality. And I picked up on the solar Ricci. So this is your 13, 14, and 15th dimensional self, aspect of self. Selves, higher selves want to come through to work with you on these higher consciousness planes and they're going to guide you over this difficult period because there's going to be a difficult period because anytime you rapidly 
raise your frequency, there's a fallout you got to deal with. And I feel like that's what they're, they're going to help you over this. Do you see how the higher self is guiding you unconsciously over the danger? And then it's going to be up to you to take this leap of faith to get you fully to safety, right? Because they've carried them over this with their hand and they've just got to jump to the safe shore. So all that to be said, this is a cycle of, of you know, consciousness transformation, which is going to shift your external reality because when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, meaning you manifesting your external reality is going to be different. It's going to be different because you're undergoing a change. And the, like I said, this is on an unconscious level. These things, that, these things that you didn't even know were within you are coming to light. You're going to get to learn these ancient pieces of yourself. Okay. Perception. What the heck? And then the three of cups. Again, <clears throat> this is about shifting your perspective. I feel like this is supposed to be the hanged man. This is card number 11. This is a major arcana. They're wearing a blindfold. But the hangman, what is the hangman? Upside down so he's seeing things differently. It's about shifting your perspective or taking a time out. And this is called perspective. So let's look here. What does the perspective card say? Card number 11. That's card 12. Oh. No, no, this is card 21. Man, okay. Perception, understanding, worldview, opinion of self, clarity, objectivity. Um, perception shapes your worldview. So yeah, you're going to be changing your... You're going to be undergoing a massive change in your external reality because you are changing. So <clears throat> changed perception cannot be unchanged. Yeah, this is all about seeking a new perspective. Represent yourself honestly. Watch for false perception. Challenge your perception. Seek a new perspective. Take the high ground. Do you have all the facts? Who influences your perception? So yeah, this is like a whole thing. Maybe you've been easily influenced by people. And now this is going to be a journey of how to trust yourself. <clears throat> and these unconscious things are typically fears. So yeah. Your surprise message is you've got a cycle of enlightenment coming and the more wisdom you gain and the higher uh, consciousnesses that you access, <laughs> it gets to be kind of um, heartbreaking. If you like, think of it like this. Remember when you first woke up and realized that everything's a lie and you're like, what's the fucking point? It's kind of going to be like that where you're gonna see you're gonna see more and you're gonna be like ah oh, feel so distraught at first but then you're gonna shift into empowerment once you purge and transmute the victim shadow is what i get on this shadow because actually if you think if you look at this here there's this person wearing black about to start on this shadow path and then seeing things differently, those shadows are actually her friends that are working for her. And then again, you have this shadow person again right here being helped through. So yeah, this is an unconscious thing of yourself that's being pushed along. <clears throat> now here with the Eight of Wands, this is going to be slow and steady. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a while because this Eight of Wands, it's a fairy riding a snail which <clears throat> I would imagine a fairy is faster than a snail. There's two fairies on here. So yeah, the, I, I always see the Eight of Wands. The Eight of Wands often depicts a person being carried by something else. Like in another deck, it's a giraffe that's carrying somebody. And I see this as spirit is lighting the way. Spirit is going to carry you. It's going to be a slow transformation into let spirit guide the way. I did skip to that card from the Three of Cups. This Three of Cups is she's looking in a, she's looking the opposite direction of everything that's behind her. And everything's moving forward this way. The, the water's flowing like this and she's looking towards the current. And there's these little bindings on her and I feel like they're being released. I feel like you've bound you. This is the thing. <gasps> that's what it is. You are shifting your perspective because you've been boxing yourself in. 
you have been keeping yourself in bondage, but you can't now. Once you see things, once your perception shifts on this particular thing, I mean, it's different for each of you. What It could be about work, a relationship, a friendship, your career, like I said, work, your career, your passion, even where you live. Just It could even be your whole life. It could be the reality in which you live in. There's going to be a big shift and it's going to set you free. And then it's like I said, it's going to be you're going to be taken on a slow journey. It's a little journey with some friends. You're not going to be alone. OK, so you have the beaver, beaver, the beaver and the porcupine. Citrine and citrine. Are you effing kidding me? And this is smoky citrine. It's smoky quartz and citrine in one. I pulled two cards that are both citrine. Okay, beaver and porcupine, porcupine, why can't I say their names? Cooperation, action, and unity. Childlike innocence, playfulness, and humility. I feel like this is the cooperation and unity and the action is the higher self. It's you taking that, that action from your higher self and they communicate more so as a thought or an, like an impulse or something. It's not like some people have the clear audience where they hear clear as day, but a lot of people don't and they can't determine who their higher self is or how are they, they talking to themselves. It's like that silhouette of a thought. And if you keep listening, it gets louder. It gets, it's not quite there, but it's there. It's like you like do you often find yourself like doing something and you're like whoa how did I start doing this I didn't even realize I was doing it it's like something took over your body and you started doing something that you needed to get done but you couldn't seem to get yourself off the couch to be able to do it and all of a sudden you're like whoa I'm up I'm moving I'm doing things that was your higher self going all right let's light your ass up let's go so it's a very seamless thing that you don't realize so that's the unity you're coming into full conscious union with your solar rishi self and um, you're going to learn how to cooperate with it. You're going to learn how to work together and be unified. And the childlike innocence, the playfulness and humility. Gosh, little kids can be so annoying with their innocence, right? Like, no matter what you're doing, you're like, what? why do you do it like that? What, what, why are you using the hot water to wash the dishes? Well, why do you put the soap in the water? You know what I mean? Just little things like that. Or you're like, okay. Um, like, can I have a snack? Well, you got to finish your homework first, but, but I'm hungry now. Well, you can fit, get your snack when you're done with your homework. Okay. So they start working and you start helping with the homework and you get one sentence in and they're like, I'm hungry. Like, God damn it. We just had this conversation. I know you're hungry. You'll get your, your snack when you're done. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's just like that childlike innocence. And I know it gets on people's nerves sometimes, but I feel, but they're also, very playful and they're very much in the present and the now moment and I feel like that is what this is going to bring you into is to not take things so freaking seriously I've taken my whole life seriously and I've just come to the point of like eh, whatever let it all fall apart don't really care like it always works out I'm always taking care of it may not work out when and how I want to but it always does <clears throat> so yeah this is there you're going to go on this adventure of the unknown the adventure of the unknown, it's not going to be safe or familiar, but it's going to be worth it. You're going to have your eyes opened to a whole new experience. And I mean, that's just awesome. So I hope that this reading gave you perspective and it resonated with you. If you would like to book your own reading, you can access the link to do that down below. Um, if you could give me a subscribe and a like, if this resonated with you, I would appreciate it. And then let me know in the comments below how, how this, uh, I keep saying resonated, how this resonated with you. All right. Thanks guys. Have a beautiful day. Hi, welcome to Raven's Wing Tarot. My name is Amanda and pile number two has chosen the Rodenite. This is a self love crystal. So I'm put that there. Here's your overall energy. Let's see what... What surprise message does spirit have for you? What surprise message does spirit have for you? We'll find out. I feel like there's one more. 
Which one was it? I feel like it was that one. So when I tried to go for this one, it didn't want to come out. Okay, well there, there that one is. Okay. I hope you guys are having a great week. I did disappear off the face of the planet because I didn't have electricity for a week and then I've spent a whole week or two weeks just trying to, then we had the holiday. So I've just been trying to get my life back in order and get everything caught up. And I plan on this week to actually film, uh, my, get all of my pick a cards for this week filmed. And then later in the week, I'm going to film next week's pick a cards. And then I want to be able to get ahead of myself. So if something like that happens again, I have content. I have content. So yeah. Okay, these two, there's a lot. Okay, I want some Oracle. You have any more cards than the last pile. These two. Ah, oh, there you go. And then one here. Okay, I think that, I think that's a duck. Okay, there you go. Okay, who the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands often talks about a burden, leaving a burden, leaving a cycle, a burdensome cycle. So let's find out. Man, this card came out in the last reading. Now I'm just going to go ahead and flip these to see where it's all going. Okay. <clears throat> so you have the Six of Swords and you have the Eight of Cups. I feel like you're coming to the end of a very burdensome cycle. Here, the hard part is over, right? And this is the beginning of the reading, so that's why I'm thinking that it's over. It's not that you're about to go on this path. I, I feel like, you know, some of you are tying it up. Some of you are coming out of it. Some of you are about halfway through. Either way, the Six of Swords is showing you that the hard part, the dangerous part, the worst of it's over. Your higher self has guided you through this. And now you just have to take that leap. It's up to you to get to the safety of the land. Here with the Eight of Cups also talks about you've done your time in the darkness. This is the black sun, right? You have done your time in the darkness. You walked across the great desert. And now because you have made it through all of that, it's time to get your flowers. You see this nine of wands? This is the nine. This is before the 10, right? Do you see that? Do you see how she's empowered? She's standing in orange, right? She's standing very, very empowered. She's standing here like, you can't fuck with me. What? Hey, baby kitty. What's going on? Yeah, you tried to jump on the sticky stuff. He's got a thing for scratching my furniture and not the things that he's supposed to be scratching. So I've got these double-sided sticky things on most of my furniture. And he jumped on one and was like, damn it. Okay. <clears throat> anyway. So yeah, the hard part's over. The worst of it's over. You and it, you're gonna, you might have, like I said, I think you're wrapping it up. I don't think it's completely over, but it's coming to an end, and you're gonna be victorious, and you're gonna alchemize this because the four of wands in this deck I always see as alchemy because you see these four sisters sitting here and they're drawing the energy down from the cosmos and they're floating on this rock. It's like they're the bridge between heaven and earth, and they are. There's some sort of a, a cycle here. It almost looks like the Pleiades, although there's only six, six instead of seven of these little star thingies up here. But I think of this as the elements, alchemizing it. And the past, present, and future here, the three of cups, I see this as the triple goddess symbol. She's got a moon she's holding, and then she's got the two other moon cycles here, right? Maiden Mother Crone, that's the triple goddess. So let's see here. You're going, once you get through this difficult peer, period and you shift into empowerment, 
and you transmute all of this and you fully alchemize this painful period in your life, you're going to finally get the perspective as to why this happened. Right now, you're kind of in the victim mode of, I can't believe this shit's happening. <laughs> like, why did this have to happen to me? That's kind of where it feels that you're at right now. But it's almost over. And then you can really heal. You're, you're in the purging phase right now. You're in the purging of the emotions. And then once you alchemize this, and stand in your power and be like, no, I ain't giving my power away to this shit no more. And you stand in your power, that's when you're gonna really alchemize it and you're gonna see the reason why this all had to happen. And because of that, you're gonna be in your power in the present once more, instead of looking at the past and the pain. And then you can weave a better future. Cause that's the thing, like you need to feel your feelings so you don't store them as trauma for them to just explode and later or hold you back. But also, you don't wanna to spend too much time in these negative feelings because then you get stuck there and you start manifesting from that space. And that's why you can't get the fuck out. Okay, so you have the 11 of Pentacles. Again, this is the heaven and earth card. It would be the page of Pentacles. But did you see here how, uh, what did I see that was the same? Oh, heaven and earth. And I said, look here, they're sitting on a rock suspended between heaven and earth, right? So this is about you balancing out. This is, I mean, you're bringing the cosmos here and it's, you're embodying more of your higher self. That's why you're going through this because you're embodying more of your higher self. And um, that doesn't happen without some pain and having to go through some shit. Because typically, you know, you're clearing things for your bloodline. But this is the balance of heaven and earth. This is the tree of life. And it's almost like a clock. I don't know if you're into sidereal astrology, but that's what I get. The, the sidereal is based on the cosmic clock. And that's what I get here. It's like there's these different little points around here. It reminds me of the cosmic clock. Also, there's the tree of life that's in the center of this. That all things, there's humans there's a scroll there's pinnacles there's a bear there's an owl there's the all-seeing eye there is it looks like a raven but i think it's a goat and then there's an actual goat what is that thing i can't tell what like an ox and a goat and a wolf and there's even some math here i've never noticed that on there so yeah this is like the and there's a dragon below it so yeah, I really do feel like this is you embodying more of your divinity and tuning into creation. Like, maybe this is even serving to open up more of your gifts um, and tuning into the elements and nature and, like, the dragons and all the elementals. Maybe your thing. And with that scroll, that's really standing out. I've never noticed that. It's never stood out so strongly before... So I feel like this is a new soul contract that's going to be coming in for you to be working more with the elements and uh, Gaia. Oh my gosh, two more cards came out that were in the last reading. That is so crazy. You, this might be, you might, if you felt drawn to pile number one, go check that one out. And there are elements of that reading in this one. But anyway, it's about shifting your perception and keeping your eye on the prize. This is the perception card, which I feel like is the hanged man, would be the hanged man card. Um, in this deck, I mean, it's a major arcana, but the perception card is unique to this one. And she's got this little sword here, and it's like it, you're shifting your perspective. Oh, that's what it is. It's because you're shifting out of victimhood into empowerment. And from then on you're not, you're going to be a victim. Nobody's going to, you're not going to feel like if something bad happens to you, you're not going to, that's not going to affect you the way that it used to, <clears throat> that you have perception, you have self-awareness, you are seeing that this is happening for you, that nobody, nobody is the villain in your story. You just cast people to play characters and this is a character that you have chosen to play i don't know why i have a bump on my finger right there it doesn't itch but here with this ace of, sorry i keep on thinking it's an ace the four of wands this is keeping your eye on the prize this card directly talks about 
Don't give up. Persevere. Go move forward. Don't give up. And this card is right underneath that other card, right? The empower you feeling empowered with the nine of wands. So you have the 10, the nine, and the four of wands. They're all like, whoop, right here. There's no wands here. There is one here. So yeah, it's like once you get this determination and once you shift your perception on this and shift out of and alchemize this and get out of the victimhood, nobody's going to be able to stop you. Holy crap. <clears throat> and as I say that, you have the 10 of sword. No, the 10 of wands. Do you see that? The 10 of wands. Do you see all those chakras lit up? And then there is the fire, fire here. And then he also has a mallet and a tool here. So it's like a chisel again with this soul contract. You're, that's what it is. You're going to shift your perception and you're going to finally see your divine purpose, your mission, and you're, it's going to be like a heat seeking missile. You had to go through all of that to become who you came here to be. That's what it is. You had to do this to come here. You had to go through all this to be who you came here to be. And all this wisdom and everything, you're going to be totally transformed. This is crazy. And once you become this version of yourself, there's no looking back. And that's what it even says on the perception card. It changed. Like, once you change your perception, you can't unchange it. It's like when you wake up. Once you wake up, you can't go back to sleep. You just can't. So now you have Peter's sight is the crystal with hawk. Observation, awareness, perception. Again, Perception, keen awareness. Um, it says, teach me to be observant and perceptive so that I may see the truth. Yeah, you're missing something. And once you, the truth shall set you, the truth shall set you free. Once you shift your perspective and once you see this as happening for you and it's not happening to hurt you or because you were bad or anything like that, once you change your story, this is going to change everything. You're going to have, like I keep, like, that's the biggest message. You, once you shift out of this energy, you're going to see it. And then nobody will ever be able to fuck with you again. Because you're going to be so empowered that you're not going to be giving your power away. You're giving your power away to this situation. And like I said, it's that balance of allowing yourself to feel how you want to feel without staying there too long. Just like in the never ending story where our tax gets lost in the swamp of sadness. Atreyu gets out because he didn't let it take him. But Artax let it consume him. And he died. And because he stayed too long, he didn't keep moving. And I feel like that's it. This is all about movement too. All of these things are moving, right? You're moving away from here. Again, action card with moving. So you're moving away from all of this and it's your choice. Okay. The hummingbird. <laughs> I was wrong. It wasn't a duck. Release what you've been carrying and lighten up. New joy is on the way. That just summarizes the reading. This 10 of uh, wands and the hummingbird. This is gene key number eight, which is exquisiteness to style through, is it mediocrity? I think so. I, I might have mixed those up. But if you're into Gene Keys, look it up. Gene Key 8. Li so they're saying, this, I said you're leaving a burden behind. This is saying lighten up new joys on the way. You've got a whole new, like, you can't tell me that with these three cards, that this isn't a badass version of you. Right? Yeah, that's, who, that's where you're turning. So... I hope this reading resonated with you and brought you empowerment. If it did and you would like your own personal reading, you can access the link down below um, on how to book your own. And if you could let me know how this reading resonated in the comments, I would appreciate it. And if you have not yet given me a follow or subscribe, please do so. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Have an awesome day. Hi, welcome pile number three to Raven's Wing Tarot. My name's Amanda and you have chosen the Black Moonstone. I almost brain farted for a second. Black Moonstone. This helps you work with your shadow aspect. So there's your overall energy. Let's go ahead and pull your messages. 
Oop, there's that. Sorry, I just realized that my cat had jumped in the last reading or the one. Anyway, he jumped up behind me and then I never saw where he went. He fell asleep. <laughs> He's sleeping back there. It is, we're moving into, oh, it's noon. This is where he begins his afternoon jaunt of napping for about the next six hours. He'll be right there and not move unless I mess with him. <laughs> Okay. All right, guys. I am almost done pulling here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wah. Okay. There's that. There's that. Hopefully, are you upside down? No, it's not. And then, um, this. Oh, I hear him. He's stirring. I was doing a personal reading for somebody earlier and he decided to start trying to sharpen his claws on my tarot decks. He's never done that. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? And then he wouldn't stop. He's getting more defiant. Before he was like, okay, mom, I'll stop. And now he's like... I'm gonna watch you. He's turning into more of a cat every friggin' day. I got very lucky with him at first, and he wasn't being very cat-like. Now he's totally a cat. But he has been neutered. It's been two weeks, so I got him neutered just in the nick of time. Because <clears throat> he was starting to get some of that male tomcat energy going on, and he wasn't being nice anymore, but now he's getting back to nice. Okay. The hermit, okay. Are you going into hermit mode or are you coming out in hermit mode? Let's find out. Hmm, let me just go ahead and flip. I feel like you're about to go into hermit mode. You're about to come into hermit mode. And that's why, and why I'm saying that is, I feel like a lot of people have been in, I myself have been in hermit mode for like a month. I ain't been barely talking to my best friend. And she's been the same too. She's like, sorry, dude. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm there right, right there with you. So you have the Hermit card, but you also have the Awakening card, which is unique to the Muse Tarot. This is a different, it comes after the World card. Awakening, this is the Higher Heart. Do you see that? That's the Azure. There's even blue light coming out of the Azure. So you're working on the Higher Heart, which is unconditional love. It's also what connects us to the zero point field. Um... It sits at the thymus. See how my, see how I've got my labradorite on? <clears throat> this is exactly where the higher heart sits. It's the thymus gland. You know how the pineal, they say, doesn't really do much? It's just your sleep-wake cycle? Huh, I think we learned all about that, right? We all know that our pineal gland is what helps us see beyond. Same thing with the thymus. I just want you to know my background is healthcare. I am an RN, have been for a bajillion years. And you know what they teach us? That... It's just for immunity. It just helps with immunity. It helps when you're growing, when you're younger, but then it just goes dormant. That's not true either. So if you can feel here, I have a lump. So find where your collarbone meets, right here, where it meets on your sternum, on the breastbone, and then it's about three finger breaths from where they meet. It's at the very bottom of that. So depending on how big your hand is, it would be like a whole hand for me. But right here, if you run your hand down here, I have a lump because mine is super activated. So that's what you're about to embark on. Okay, so anytime you're working on heart chakra stuff, right? Be prepared to cry. Happy tears, sad tears, gratitude tears. There's a lot of crying that comes with being happy. <laughs> so... A lot of people associate crying with <clears throat> being hurt, having sad feelings, and that's okay. And you're going to be purging this, so there's going to be a lot of stored shit that's in there that's going to be coming out. Uh, maybe some of you, I feel like some of you have already been going through this, um, but a lot of you are just going to be coming into it. A lot of you are just starting this. Some of you are in the middle of it already. Um... But also you're going to 
have a deeper sense of gratitude for your experiences, for things that you have, for the people in your life. That's what's coming in with this. Also, here with the Ten of Pentacles, the Ten of Pentacles is getting everything you could have ever wanted in life. I always call this particular card in this deck the, uh, the Yahoo Glory, <laughs> the Yahoo Glory card, because it reminds me of the Who's gathered around the tree in Whoville right and they're all happy and there's all this love it's like you're gonna learn how to create your own that's what it is that's what it is you're gonna learn to manifest through your heart space that's part of it you're gonna learn how to manifest through your heart space and you need to purge it before you can activate it and then once you you purge it and you activate it again here you have the i say again here but you have the ace of wands and she's got this light coming out of her third eye. Wasn't I talking about the, the pineal gland and the thymus gland, right? You have heart, these activations are coming through the both, right? Once this activates and you go through this, you're going to have a whole download of shifted awareness on how you manifest and eliminating fear when it comes to abundance as well, because there's an owl here an owl eats fear. Okay. And when I say that the reason why it's like the fear and the lack mentality, because you have the five of pinnacles. Does this look like a happy and joyful card? No, don't. <laughs> this card is like you feel like the world has turned their back on you and you have given up. You're done. Do you see this person here? They're laying in the fetal position all wrapped up in almost like a burial shroud. Like I, I'm done. I've given up. I'm, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm over it. And they don't see because they've turned their back, but they're only a few feet away from the doors opening to abundance. And there's these pinnacles, the roses up here. They don't have actual pinnacles. The roses are the pinnacles in this deck. So it's right there. It's the darkness was serving you to clear that space out so that you can gain access. There's just too much. It's like the the rose the rose bushes had overgrown to where you couldn't open up the gate to the garden and you're gonna have to go through this little hermit mode of clearing this shit out of your heart chakra that's that's what i feel is you're gonna do that's what you're that's where you're headed okay the three of swords and the six of cups queen of swords four of cups okay <clears throat> The Three of Swords in this deck does not talk about cheating or betrayal, which a lot of them do, but this one does not talk about it. This one talks about, do you see how she's gathering up this birch wood or aspen wood? She's gathering this kindling up, right? She's taking time out. This is taking time out to gather your energies, to fill your own cup up. Do you see this? This is the Six of Cups. She's got all these magic cups and she's holding it lovingly. And this is taking time out to fill your cup up, to nurture yourself, to also learn how to be more, what's the word I'm looking for? Mindful of how you spend your energy and who you spend it on. Whether it's entertaining stories on social media or news stories, things that drain you, following people on social media that don't add anything to your value to your life. I feel like whatever this is, these are just examples, but you're not going to give when you're done with this transformation through this transformation, you're going to learn how to keep your emotions in check because you probably are a bleeding heart person. Somebody who possibly leans on the savior complex. Like, I can help you, I can fix you, I can save you, to your own detriment. And those people never probably get their shit together, right? But you're the one who gets drained of all your life force and resources. And that's what this, that's what I feel like this Six of Cups is talking about here, and this Queen of Swords is learning how to say no. Does sounding going to a kid's birthday party sound like a nightmare for you? Not all the time, but maybe this particular day you woke up because you had a terrible night's sleep. 
you have five million chores that you need to get done, but because you were up late and you slept late, it threw everything off. Old you would put your needs on the back burner to go to this, your friend's kid's birthday party, right? New you will just straight up tell them like, look, I'll bring by a present later, but I just, I can't today. Things came up and I've, I'm choosing myself. Again, that's an example. It can happen in 5 million other ways. But that's the queen of swords here is boundaries, establishing boundaries and not letting guilt or shame or fear rule you anymore. And that's what this is. Also with that, that five materials, um, it's, it's filling your cup up so that you can align to your abundance because you're, once you open up this heart chakra and getting like this 10 of pentacles, it's coming, but you've got to purge. You've got to have all these fears come out. These fears have to be purged for you to get there. And then also here with the four of cups, the four of cups is again, it's just about shifting your awareness. What you, your surprise message is you've got, you've got abundance um, around you, but you're too busy looking at your two empty cups. You don't see you've got two full cups behind you. You're focusing on the lack and you're not focusing on what you have. You still have, you still have cups, right? Not all of them are lost. And this is about your perspective. Four cups talks about not seeing the big picture. You're missing something. You're not seeing something. So this is definitely serving to shift your perspective on how you focus on lack, whether it's in relationships with people, friends, your career, or money. So this is you dealing with your fear and lack is what's going to be coming through for you. Let's see here. You have the Wolverine and the Fox. With Rodenite, that was in the last pile. That was, the, that was the crystal for the last pile. All these piles are related in some way, shape, or form. So if you were already drawn to one of the other piles, go to it. But don't go looking for it if you weren't, okay? Persistent strength, passion, Rodenite. Awaken my passions and remind me I have the strength to pursue them to completion. There you go. That's it. This also could, th uh, with that, this also could be that you, you're on the path of following your passions and not the logical path. And you're worried about following your passions that you're not going to be supported financially. And that's what you need to work through before you can go fully be supported in this journey. You've got to know that you're fully supported and you've got to purge some of this out. Okay, and then you have the fox with tangerine aura quartz, camouflage, observant, playful. This is looking, a little, yeah, I'm just saying, if you have the other, if the other two piles, one of those are both resonated, go watch them. <clears throat> Help me remain silent and observant of my surroundings in order to make the right decision at the right time. Thank you, Waho. So yeah, they're saying don't give up. You've got, the pa you've got the strength to push through all this, but it's about going within and digging deep at this time. The magpie, the wren, and the white owl. Owl is very strong in your reading, very much. Okay, reevaluate your priorities. It's time, it is time to let go of what you no longer need. Where, who is this, what is this? Is this a job? Is this a friendship? Is this a habit? Is this um, a relationship? There, whatever it is, you, whatever you've been focusing your attention on, it's time for you to shift out of that. Shift your awareness into something different. There's something that's been weighing you down and it's time to let it go. The Wren. Be bold and confident. Use all your resources to create your dreams. Anytime they've given me this card for myself, that means I don't need anything else to do what it is that I'm trying to pursue. Would I like something else? Would I like more resources? Yes, but they're telling you, you already have everything you need. It doesn't need to be perfect or professional, a total professional setup in order for you to get started. It's just important for you to get started. The shitter get off the pot. This is the you done need to wipe and flush and wash your hands and get the fuck out of the bathroom. That's that's what they're saying right here. So 
you use all your resources to create your dreams. Um, like for me, I thought that I wanted to get a new camera before I could start doing this. I wanted to get all these other things. I wanted to get my intro video and outro video done. I wanted to do, I didn't even have a name for what I wanted to rebrand my channel before I could get started. I want to do all these things. And Spirit is like, nah, you've already got everything you need. Just do it. <clears throat> and then I had to realize, you know, the, uh, the then when my electricity was out for eight days, I had to realize, you know, the resources. That's when it clicked in my head. I need to quit taking for granted, which I always am grateful for my utilities and I express gratitude for that, but I got a completely different level of gratitude through that whole thing. Um, and I was wasting my resources. I wasn't filming as frequently as I would like to film. Um, I wasn't doing, you know what I mean? There, I wasn't creating my products as routinely. I wasn't do, making the most of my time. I was letting bad habits get in the way of getting on my social media and replying to um, you know, I hate to call them followers, but replying to the comments on my posts or the DMs that I get, because, <clears throat> you know, I hit uh, 5K on my Instagram, so it's been a lot busier. And I feel like, you know, I needed to set things into, I like, I needed to, I got so bored with not being able to create the way I wanted to create during that whole eight days that I, you know, I did start to see things differently that, you know, I'm wasting my resources. I have electricity every single day. I should be doing something with that every single day, right? Just because I feel a little bit tired or whatever, my brain feels kind of foggy. Once I get started recording, that helps me ground actually. So I end up feeling better. I feel like that's what they're saying too. You, do, you don't need to have all these things. You already have what you need. So just use what you've got. You can upgrade later. The white owl. The wisdom and messages of the divine are within you. So through this hermit mode, you're going to get very clear on what your passions are. Again, what you're really passionate about. Reawakening what you're passionate about. Maybe this is a call for you to go within to, to work on your heart. There are higher heart um, meditations that you can look up on YouTube. Just look it up, higher heart meditation. If you're not into meditating really, then you can look up higher heart um, sophageo frequencies and you can find that. Let's see here. Spirit, are you gonna play along and tell me, give me a cut card here. Dang it, I thought they were gonna give me a, a, a card that gives you a frequency. I did hear 852 hertz though. I was close, Bastet 174. That's not for the higher heart, but this will help liberate fear and guilt. So 174 is a frequency. Oh, look, and Aslan came over here to say, yeah, better listen to 174 frequency of my cat, people. <laughs> um, but 852 came up, and I actually just remembered it's Spirit Owl of 852 Hertz. I can't find it in here. I, I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but just know it's an owl. Get out of my water, butthead. There it is, Spirit Owl of 852 Hertz. That actually had came into my head, was 852, and I remembered it's an owl. Shoot, so there you go, 174 and 852. If you enjoyed this reading, please let me know in the comment section down below how it resonated. If you wanna book your own personal reading, you can access the link in the description box for that. And if you have yet to subscribe, um, I would appreciate it if you could do that for me now. Okay. I love you guys. Bye. Have a great day.